Can we talk about zombies for a second? <laughs> yep, those guys. But specifically, these guys. The ones that would give you nightmares. The ones that you really have to worry about. I know people have asked a million questions concerning zombies, but I'm here to add a few. Kingdom, the South Korean show, gave us another eye view into what zombieism or zombies could actually be like. We have real world zombies, the horsehair worm, and that fungus that takes over ants and makes them act like robots, and then turns into a freaking fungus plant after they die, spilling spores all over the community. We've seen examples in that in The Last of Us and Girl with All the Gifts. The horsehair worm was more so portrayed in Kingdom. So I like how these newer zombie movies are showcasing how something like this could happen in real life to human beings. What's clear is that when these things take over a host, the host is no longer the host. It is being controlled by the pathogen or by the fungus. But here's one thing that really doesn't make sense when you check out the movies and how long the zombies exist. You see, we human beings have to slow down. We have to rest because our brain can't function after a while. The reason why we do this is evolution. Evolutionary. It's self-preservation. Your muscles do need to heal. Muscles need to repair. Since blood technically isn't pumping through anymore, at least not to a dead body, how is it supposed to send oxygen to the rest of the body? And how is the brain supposed to function adequately to tell the body to repair itself? That's not happening. The only thing that the thing taking over the host body concerns itself with is spreading it around. It's spreading more because it knows that body's not going to last a long time. But in movies like World War Z, Train to Busan, and many others, these creatures are constantly, constantly running if there's any living things in sight. In World War Z, there was no end to it. And I guess you could say the bodies are basically dead. The humans as we know them are no longer themselves. It's not your neighbor down the street that's in that body anymore. That cloudy-eyed piece of meat heading straight for you with its mouth open and jaws clamoring is definitely not under his own control. The person as we know it is dead. And I can understand why we as humans or anybody watching that transformation would think that the body itself is dead as well. But that's possibly not the case. Maybe the shock to the body does cause the heart to stop beating, but once the host takes over or the virus takes over, it's using the brain to operate this body. A lot of the zombies still use their eyes, which the brain definitely has to be alive to do. As a matter of fact, most of the body functions and operations of the body have to have the brain alive to be able to work. So technically the zombies themselves are not dead like a doornail. But then why are they decaying? Well, to figure out all of this and to figure out how the zombies would even run and why is it that many of these zombies run in the first place, let's take a look at how the body operates. You would say that the most important organs in your body are your heart and your brain. It is said that the heart is at the center of your circulatory system. And the circulatory system is a network of blood vessels that deliver blood to every part of your body. This blood, the red stuff flowing through your veins and that spills out when you cut yourself, carries oxygen and other important nutrients that all body organs need to stay healthy and to work properly. Your heart is the one doing a lot of the work as it is a muscle in order to pump blood throughout your body or your circulatory system. So it's either the thing infecting the host or the virus or fungus infecting the human body has to slightly reanimate the body or the functions of the body to some degree as much as it can or mimic those functions. The primary important function a virus or fungus would need to take over the body is for it to move and spread. And a body is not able to move without its muscles since the muscles are responsible for turning energy into motion, making them the engines of the body. They're so important that they last very long, they're able to heal themselves, grow stronger to accompany the actions that you're doing, and even even are partly responsible for keeping your blood flowing. We'll get to the running zombies in a little bit. You'll notice also that even the pastiest zombies have some form of liquid flowing through them. Unless you're watching Indiana Jones or one of the mummy movies, you're not gonna cut a zombie's head off and see just dry dust coming off of it because the body, for it to move, it needs lubrication, just like a machine. We need our blood to transport oxygen to our muscles and our brain and our nutrients and whatnot. These zombies are still able to do basic functions like running and roaring because they still have some form of blood or some form of liquid flowing through their bodies to lubricate the system. And it's totally possible that that liquid we're talking about could be also provided by the pathogen or whatever is taking control of the body. Now, I know what people would probably ask. 
how could zombies still have blood that keeps them moving and that transfers oxygen if they're dead? Well, that's because while the person is dead, technically the body is still sort of alive because something is keeping it alive, sort of. The body is dying, but it's not totally dead. It can move, there's brain activity, and there are some basic functions that still work, all because a thing taking over the brain, whether that be a parasite, a virus, or a fungus, is in the driver's seat. You'll notice that in the movies with running zombies, the people bitten are infected way faster or they change into zombies way faster than the movies with slow moving zombies. These viruses or whatever it is that's infecting humans know that there's only a little bit of time until the body completely gives out. I know a strange example of this, it's kind of offshoot because these are not actually zombies, is the I Am Legend vampire things. They are actually vampires. They don't actually decay. Who they are as a human decays because the virus changes them, but they themselves, the bodies don't decay, it just kind of transforms. And then they live forever and can't stand the sunlight. But we're talking about the other decaying zombies like in World War Z or even in Resident Evil that we see. Now I'm not a professional scientist or anything, but I imagine that if I was a virus, I would take over a human body and use the functions I have left. Whatever blood is in the body, I use the brain since I am now basically the driver to circulate enough blood or oxygen that I can probably metabolize, as they've explained somewhat in the Girl with All the Gifts movie, just enough for the body to keep functioning until I've infected enough other bodies. Remember I talked about the muscles earlier? I think the reason why zombies are able to run and why that actually makes a lot of sense for the zombies to run is because one, the infector, the thing that infects humans, expects the host to move quickly because A, the human body only has a short amount of time before it can no longer be used. Basically, they run it into the ground, like literally. And B, their targets that they want to bite and infect can also run. It just biologically makes a lot more sense than the Minecraft zombies that we see slouching over and moving at the speed of backwards. The second reason why it makes more sense for there to be running zombies is because of the circulation. And this is why, in some respects, running zombies would probably last longer than the average walking zombies. I know it doesn't make sense, but here are two reasons why I think so. One, they can get enough nutrients to somewhat keep the body running for as long as possible. And two, is because running actually helps the blood or whatever viscous fluid is inside the body to circulate into the rest of the body, which keeps it lasting longer and keeps it optimized at least as long as it can be. I know that makes no sense to some people, but hear me out. So the virus now has taken over this body that we essentially see as dead, but it is a dying body. And the virus, let's call it the virus because it can be a fungus or whatever, doesn't really care about the body being the healthiest. It cares about the body staying as mobile as long as possible so that it can spread as much as it can. It doesn't care if the body is pretty. It basically takes the human body and makes it into a beater car. Basically a rusty old car which you don't care about, you don't care whether or not it gets into accidents, you barely even put liability on it, nor do you care about its appearance. You're basically a delivery driver and you just care that the car is functional enough so you can get from A to B for as long as you need the car. Maybe that's until the end of the school year. You don't care how it looks, you don't care how it sounds or smells, you just care that it runs. Probably the kind of car you'd sell on Craigslist for like $500. That's how the virus treats the human body. But just like you would still need to put gas in that beater car, this virus knows that the human body still needs things to basically function. In a normal human body, the heart is responsible for pumping blood all around the body. Yes, this is true. However, the muscles are also very responsible for your blood circulating. Here's an excerpt from an article by Dr. Baird, who is an assistant professor at physics at West Texas A&M University. And I'm gonna read it in his voice. Sue me. The heart is not strong enough by itself to get the blood back up the veins in your legs and back to your heart. The human body relies on a second system to finish that task. The system involves small valves throughout the veins and muscle contractions from your skeletal muscles when you walk and move about. The valves close when your blood starts to flow in one direction, so that blood in the veins can only flow in the direction back to the heart, which is up the legs. When you squeeze your leg muscles to walk, stand, kick, and move about, the muscles squeeze the veins and force the blood to get moving. Because of the valves, the blood can only move in one direction as it gets squeezed along. So it is a combination of blood pressure from the heart pumping, the valves, the muscle movement that gets the blood up the legs against gravity. So, based on that, our movement greatly helps the circulation of blood and oxygen to the rest of the body. That's why it's heavily unadvisable to sit in one place for a very long time or to not be active at all. People who walk regularly or who are regularly active are much healthier and live a lot longer because they're lubing up the body. As I've said before in other videos, my grandfather is 104 and he was a builder for almost all of his adult life. Even into his old age after he retired, he was always active every morning, always chopping wood every morning, always walking up and down the lane. Back in our country, 
country, he didn't have a vehicle, so he walked everywhere. He only started getting confused when he came to America when he was no longer as active or when he had nothing to do. As soon as he was active again, he was as right as rain. As a man who has lived over a century, he has no idea how to slow down. And all the way back in my family tree, I've had members who've lived well into their 90s or hundreds. And one thing that was common with all of them is that we were always active and we ate the right nutrients. That keeps your body working a lot longer. Your heart will still be at work, but your body will not be at its optimum if you're not moving. And this is why the zombies that run are a lot stronger and you can even say last a lot longer. It helps them eat a lot more than the walking zombies because they can probably catch stuff a lot more. But yeah, here's another question. Why would they decay at all, these running zombies? Well, my theory is that while in some climates, these zombies would probably last a lot longer, in other situations, it would seem as though they would decay just as fast. Well, here's the thing. When something is constantly running and constantly moving, there's this thing called friction. Bones and muscles start to break down because these bodies are not kept in their best condition by these viruses. Even the healthiest people that are very active, if they don't get rest, their bodies will start to fall apart. Eventually, just like a beater car, the virus will run the body of the zombie into the ground. Even if the zombies are getting nutrients for the virus to metabolize and keep the body moving, because the body is always moving, like literally nonstop, even when they're not running without stopping or getting tired, it is walking or searching for the next meal. It doesn't sleep. And human bodies were not meant to keep running like this. Even though technically the body is still alive because it's still functioning, the body is not giving time to repair adequately for how much it's being used. For example, if you're always running every day and you only get an hour of sleep every day, you would start to sustain a lot of injuries because during that sleep time, your body would utilize the downtime to repair the muscles. But if you're constantly moving and not getting adequate rest despite you still eating or parts of your body that are constantly being overused or not given enough rest, what can happen is that your muscles can start tearing, bones will start fracturing and breaking, your skin will start to wear, and your body will literally start to decay before your eyes. Don't believe me? Look up some documentaries and videos of what people look like who have haven't slept in days. They basically look dead. And that is what really happens with the running zombies. Your bodies are kept alive, but if they're given adequate enough rest while they were also getting nutrients by popping off living people's heads and whatnot, they probably would look like regular people for a lot longer. But the virus don't care. All they want to do is spread their DNA far and wide, just like Pokemon. And they want to do it quickly. They use the human bodies and they use them hard. And then when they're finally not able to be used anymore, they run into mush while the virus carries on into other hosts. They don't want this body to live forever. They want their DNA to live forever. And since the infector only has a short lifespan from host to host, it has to keep infecting for it to breed and for its kind to keep alive a lot longer. Unlike us, where we have one baby and the baby will live a very long time. If that wasn't the case, we would be just like rats and insects, having to continuously breed and always be quick on the draw because our lives are so short and so easy to be snuffed out. Anyways, that's just my theory on the whole matter. What do you guys think? If anybody here is a science major, I love science, but I'm definitely not a professional or anything, then please, I would love to hear your two cents on this. I'm sure there's other YouTube videos about this too, but this was just my thoughts, which is why it's in the my thoughts folder. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Ultiori. You ask, me answer.